speaking of the, the industry, um, what are some of the trends you're seeing today? Mm -hmm. So there's two things that I see are, you know, perhaps the most important and impactful trends that are going on. So first of all is the labor crisis. And so historically in this country right now, we are at some of the lowest unemployment levels that sure. we've had. And certainly a much different picture than it was in 2007, 2008. And so you kind of have a perfect storm going with regard to trying to get teachers in the door and working for you in your child care center because teachers are a lower paid, lower wage job. And so you're not only competing with other preschools for teachers, you're competing with Amazon, Walmart, yeah. you know, all, all these companies are growing, tech companies are going crazy. And so, you know, you really need to lead with making a difference in a child's life and you need to lead with your awesome culture and have core values and have a, you know, a, a process where you can interview and hire to people that are fit with your company and really lead with that. You actually have to market to staffs how to build that culture and how to hire to that culture so that you can not only have a culture of coll collaboration and excellence, but you can win the war of hiring. This labor crisis, you have to get teachers in the door in order to get enrollments. That's, you know? that's so true, and culture trumps everything else. Culture trumps everything. You can train to the job, you can do that. Yes, you have to have a basic skill set, but if they don't fit your culture, right. it just throws everything off. Right. We've been going through uh, a big culture uh, uh, shift at our company over the last couple of years, too, and bringing that, bringing that in in our core values. So it's really, really important. It's a huge game changer. And uh, it's kind of interesting because I've been spending a lot of time down in Australia and New Zealand and there. And, uh, there is labor crisis down there too. It's the same problems around around, around the world. world. Uh, getting great staff and and keeping them and um, making them feel um, engaged. Right. In, in your program. So one of the tactical things that I, I keynoted at the Georgia Child Care Association, and one of the things that was an eye opener for them was we were talking about the same topic was build out a really beautiful careers page or at least a compelling careers and join our team page on your website and 90% of child care companies don't even have a careers page and so how are you going to win the labor crisis in the war of hiring if you don't have these assets built on your digital marketing and that's the thing that people just they're not savvy to the point where they're really you know pulling people in and marketing to candidates and recruiting candidates like how you enroll families. You have to think about it the exact same way. You really have to market to millennials and market to today's candidates. Like that's a long-term thing. What's the career yeah. path and understanding that there is growth out there. Right, and demonstrating that online. I mean, showing that path and talking about your benefits and talking about why you're a great team and showing pictures of teachers having fun together and having teacher testimonials and so really building that out. So we're gonna provide a checklist for people starting at tomorrow's summit. So I'm very passionate about that's it, fantastic. obviously. I, yeah. I, can't wait, and I know a lot of our clients yeah. can't wait, and uh, I know you have a lot of them. We have a lot of common clients. We do. Clients, so we have a really lot of cool. common clients. Uh, how about uh, trends in uh, centers being um, full or not full? I know, you know, during the recession, they all emptied out. Right. Right before then, it was like waiting lists everywhere. Right. Uh, you couldn't yeah. build centers fast enough. Right. Where do you see the, de the demographic trends going? So it's hard to say with you know what's going on in our political climate, what's going to happen with the recessionary trends in the economy, and I, you know I'm not able to really forecast that so much. But what I do do is I help people, again, build these assets in their business so that it keeps them recession proof. And so the second trend that I really see as being super impactful is around technology. It's around automation and systems so that people can. Um, automate key parts of their business, like the hiring funnel I was just talking about, or using childcare CRM as their enrollment funnel, driving leads, driving prospects, building relationships, using automation technology and systems to a greater degree. And I feel like the childcare industry is a laggard. We are behind most many other companies. The world is up here and we as an industry are lagging and there's all of this technology available but we're not really using it yeah, it's I, frustrating I've seen that throughout my <laughs> 20 some yeah. years in the industry it's, it's always been lagging technology wise you got the best things going out there and this industry is slow to adopt right it's slow to adopt and so we again at the summit 
have this wonderful marketplace of exhibitors, and you guys are going to be there as sponsors. And the leading sponsors at the summit are tech, are tech companies primarily, and I want people to embrace that. I want the owners and the leaders in the industry to get more savvy about pulling these great technology pieces in. They're by and large very affordable, like Kangaroo Time and Childcare CRM and um, Life Cubby and others. Uh, they're all going to be there for our folks to try to up level. You know spend less time doing the, the paper, shifting paper around in piles, automate it, get it digital, and let it run while you're sleeping. And then you can go on vacation yeah. because it's being handled. Your That's enrollment true. is being handled. And so if we do hit a recession, then you have a huge bucket of leads in your childcare CRM that you can e-blast. It's yeah. like. I, I think that's kind of an interesting point too. Um, a lot of times, Centers will fill up, they're going to wait list, don't think they need to do this. Well, uh, it's my impression that, you know, it's all about brand building too. And every day you're building your brand. And just because you're full today doesn't mean you're going to be full tomorrow. And if you're not responding right. to parents, you're not engaging parents, you're not doing that, that best practice step, uh, at some point, yes. you could come back to, to haunt you. Yeah, I mean, one client that we have in common, Donna, she had that happen to her recently, and she got on the phone with Brian on my team and was like, I was assuming my wait list would last forever, and then boom, <laughs> you know, but, yeah. and then she quickly got back up to being full again, but it's like, it does happen if you don't keep your eye on it. You never know when a nice new competitor is going to open up across the street from you, right? Exactly. Or a business is going to go out, and you always got to be prepared yeah. uh, to do that. Always be marketing, always be hiring. Yeah, it seems like this industry, it's, it's, you know, it's about impacting children's lives more and more. And how do you do that? Well, if you, you don't get them in there and you're talking about getting a lot of leads and filling your pipeline, it's also taking care of those in your pipeline. A lot of times we find uh, people say, well, I just need more leads. I need more leads. I need more leads. You really need to work the ones you have. That's so true. It's amazing. <laughs> That's so true. I like we got, you know, four spots in the toddler room. Well, when's the last time you did an e-blast just to the toddler ages? When's the last time that you called them all up and, you know, or sent them a book or, you know, something where you're actually working those leads? And you've got, they've got hot leads in their system identified, but they're just not working the leads. They do, and it's all yeah. about engagement. In fact, we've actually, uh, this year, we've put together a brand new uh, area of the system, which is called our drip campaigns, which you can actually time things as, as they go out. Uh, if you want to start in two weeks, you get six communications. If you want to start in uh, six months, you get six communications, but they're spaced equally. And you can actually tell what the responsiveness is. Are they opening? Are they reading? Are they clicking through? As well as, right. are they moving through your pipeline when they get certain things so you know which messages are actually hitting them and driving them mm -hmm. to action. So it's. Really kind yeah, of, I mean, we help kind of people nice. work their email drip campaigns to a higher level of open and writing copy because the headline is important for figuring out if they're, you know, just get, having engaging headlines or subject lines in the emails is, is really important. And people, by and large, in childcare haven't really been taught how to write compelling copy. So that's definitely something that we do. It makes a huge difference. Um, I'll just mention, we also have a brand new digital marketing agency that I just started with my partner, Bruce. About that. <laughs> yeah, Bruce Spur, it's called Grow Your Center, and we're really excited about it because we've had so many clients over the years say, hey Chris, why can't we just get somebody to do a great website, great Facebook ads, and all of this for us, completely done for you, instead of us having to learn it and try to get it done, and so we finally fixed the problem. It's not their core competency, <laughs> right? right? <laughs> so, totally, and uh, so I'm actually writing copy for people's websites, which I enjoy. It's a kind of little side passion of mine. So that's uh, Grow Your Center. Uh, also trend-wise, um, notice what are, the, what are the, the larger companies doing that this, the small organizations aren't? Mm -hmm. And what can they learn from that? Mm -hmm. So the larger companies are uh, better at determining first of all, roles within your enrollment funnel. So having an enrollment specialist, having somebody whose sole job is to answer the phone really well using a great phone script, doing an amazing tour, scripting out the tour, having it be systemized, and, and then tracking all the leads in CRM, putting them in and making sure that all of those. So having somebody really focused on the marketing and enrollment 
is a huge best practice. Um, and even if you're small, you know, having somebody on, maybe you have a teacher whose talent, they love social media. And so you can pull them out of the classroom and double duty them with being able to, you know, utilize them to help you with your Facebook ads and posts during nap times. So figuring out the hidden strengths and, and like uh, talents. Hidden, hidden strengths and talents. Yeah, and then applying that because you don't necessarily have to hire a bunch more, you know, sometimes if you're small, you can't afford full-time employees for that stuff, but you can certainly do it based on uh, what we call unique brilliances or abilities. And the other thing is outsourcing. I mean, you can outsource, so, there's so much talent around the world right now via Fiverr and um, Upwork and these, these virtual assistant uh, sites that they want work for 15 or 20 bucks an hour. And you can get so much done through outsourcing and you don't have to hire another headcount yeah, to do it. So That's true. And yeah. Uh, based on your uh, comment about uh, dedicating something buddy to the enrollment process, uh, we've just done a major study uh, across our entire client base of some close to 3,000 centers. And what we found is those that do have dedicated people have significantly better results in conversions mm -hmm. into tours and, and registrations right. and enrollments uh, throughout. It's yeah. just, it's night and day. It's, it's really amazing. You know, a kind of a basic principle, which is just focus, you know, the focus on a specific goal setting goals and measuring just the focus and the measuring ah, my favorite you can't manage <laughs> what you can't measure that's it that's it that's one of the chris murray quotes yeah. that's, that i'm known for but what you measure improves and that's what i've been teaching people for the last eight or nine years um but the people that are measuring through looking at their crm conversion reports um the very first thing i do with a client is i say first of all get crm and send me your conversion success report after about a month or two and let me look at it. And that's where we start. When you when you ask that question yeah. before they're using CRM, yeah. how many of those people actually can spout those numbers out? Uh, 1%. Yeah. That's Not even. <laughs> okay, none. <laughs> Let's just say it. None. It's, um, it's funny we always get that result. Well, yeah. tell me tell me how you've improved. Tell me what they were doing right. before. We don't, we don't do know. Well, we don't know. Yeah, we don't, don't know. know what they're it's doing just before. a completely yeah, blank kind slate. Funny. And I'm like, you know, usually where they start measuring is they go, this is how many tours I've done and this is how many I converted, but even that, but they're not measuring phone calls or taking information off the phone call at all. It's, it's kind of amazing. It's a black that, hole. That self-reporting, it's like, yeah. oh, I, I convert 80% of all my leads. Right. Now, 80% uh -huh. of, of the, the good ones that sign up when you're there. You Correct. <laughs> That's right. Them. I'm like, you really don't know because you're not measuring it. So until you actually have the data, let's not just make assumptions.